a pen, or a keyboard, today we're talking about a highly controversial topic, so stay tuned to find out which one I think is the winner. If you find this video to be of value, I'd love it if you could give it a thumbs up and spread the word. Have you ever heard that quote from Margaret Mead, never doubt that a small group of thoughtful, committed citizens could change the world? Indeed, it is the only thing that ever has. Well, I think the same could be said for Apple products. Who could have imagined that a small group of products could change the world so dramatically, so much so that they have forever left a dent in the universe? Well, I guess we could say Steve Jobs imagined that, but let's face it, he left it up to the rest of us to decide what we were going to make and do with this dent. Now, when it comes to classrooms, especially those in higher education, Many have decided that the verdict is in and that the pen has won over the keyboard. If you are a student today, chances are that you are using your devices for just about anything and everything. Yet when you come into the classroom, the first thing that you'll hear from many of your professors is put those devices away. I think really all industries and really a lot of people are struggling to really define what role technology really plays in an academic, personal, and professional setting. And a lot of times, one of the things that we feel like we often have to do is choose one or the other. In this video, I'm going to propose what if we accept the best of both worlds? Now, in my role at USC and in visiting a number of other colleges and universities, here are my top two observations. Number one, it's really rare that professors actually take the time to teach students how to use their devices in an academic and professional setting. Most of them have written you off as being digital natives, mostly because they think that you grew up using this technology or they see you using it all the time because you're on Facebook, on Instagram, and things like that. But the reality is that this concept of being a digital native is really just a myth. And you can read more about that if you like with the blog post that accompanies this video, which I've dropped a link to down below. Number two, it's really rare that we actually see professors change their teaching style and what's happening face to face in the classroom now that so many of you are bringing devices with you. So essentially what we're seeing are traditional learning environments competing with modern ways of learning. And I think that the two are a little bit incompatible, not always, but oftentimes they really are. Now, I'm a really big believer that when we raise the expectations, we also have to raise our level of support. So if we're expecting that students are gonna be using their devices in meaningful and respectable ways that are not distracting to the classroom environment, then we have to be able to support them in this transition. We cannot simply expect that they will walk in the door with the understanding of what that actually looks and feels like. So if your professor isn't going to change their ways, it doesn't mean that you have to get left behind. And in this video, I'm gonna share three strategies for success that you can use with your devices in both an innovative and traditional classroom environment. Now, I'm really proud to be leading the one-to-one -one iPad initiative at the PA program over at Keck at the University of Southern California. And one of the reasons I love our program is because we've really made a commitment to integrating digital literacy skills across the curriculum. And our goal is really to be able to empower students to use their devices in a way that's going to make them successful and in a way that's going to open the door to opportunities that many of them don't even know exist. And if you're curious as to how a high school history teacher became the director of innovative learning over in a medical program, I've dropped a link down to a video below where I share this story. All right, so let's get to it. Regardless of whether you are in a one-to-one -one program or you just have your own device, here are three strategies for success when using your devices for learning. Now, I don't know about all of you, but when I was going through school, I can't even count how many times I had to turn in my notes or my notebook for a grade. From handwriting to organization, everything was usually checked. So when we switch over to using digital devices, the challenge really is that that system that we were taught or that system that we are so used to doesn't always work in the same way. It's important to remember that iPads, laptops, paper, 
all have functional differences, and while they can definitely replace each other in some aspects, I always like to view them as complements to one another. But like I mentioned, this really isn't something that we actually teach students, so the problem then becomes is nobody really understands what these differences look like and how these different tools can complement one another. So the first thing that we're going to do is take a look at note taking. And while there are lots of different note taking apps, the one that we're going to focus on in today's video is called Notability. Now, if you've never used Notability before, don't worry at all. I've dropped a link to a tutorial that will get you started down below. One of the great things is that when you open up the app, you'll see a welcome note, and that welcome note contains a series of different activities that are designed to help you master the tool. I think one of the greatest challenges with paper is that oftentimes what you create is really just static. You can't move it around, you can't keep adding on and extending your ideas as you learn more, you can't even reorganize your ideas if you want to go back and sort of sort things out. At least you can't do any of this without a really good eraser and lots and lots of paper to keep redoing your notes over and over again. Or consider the other situation where oftentimes you begin with like an assigned reading at home and from there maybe you come to class and you hear a lecture and as time goes on maybe you're sort of in another class and then you have these other ideas that you'd like to add on and extend upon but sometimes you don't remember where the other paper was or where those other notes were kept and really what we're saying is that when you are using paper only you are limiting yourself to a very static sort of workflow. So one of the things that I absolutely love about Notability is that it is so easy to move things around and reorganize your ideas and really keep building upon what it is you're learning to make those deeper connections. I also think it's a great tool if you have been using pen and paper for most of your academic career. It really mimics the pen and paper experience very well. So it's pretty easy to transition over to this way of note taking. Let's go ahead and take a look at this example. So let's get started. Here we are on our iPad screen. We're gonna go ahead and tap on Notability. And one of the things, like I mentioned before, that I love about Notability is that it does a great job of really introducing you to the app through the welcome note that's there on the right hand side. So I'm gonna go ahead and tap on this welcome note. Now remember, this isn't really a tutorial for Notability. I just wanna be able to highlight a few features in here that I think are really gonna help those of you who are really used to pen and paper be able to transition a little bit more smoothly. So this is the welcome app. The one thing I will tell you is you wanna take two fingers on the screen to swipe through the document. And it's gonna guide you through all of the different possibilities for what you can do with the different tools in here. The one in particular that I wanna be able to highlight for you is the handwriting tool. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and up on my tool selection, I'm gonna go ahead and select the pen tool. Now, again, I can go ahead and I can tap again to get some selection. So I can choose the thickness of my pen, the color. So I'm gonna choose a relatively fine tip point here. Let's maybe go with this one. And I'm gonna go ahead and select the white text. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and let me just go ahead and write my name on the image that's over here. Now, one of the things that you may have noticed is that, you know, it's very big. So if you're thinking about annotating on top of a slide, one of your concerns might be, well, what if I run out of room and so on and so forth. So like I said, with Notability, you can really mimic the pen and paper experience. So all I'm gonna do is go ahead and tap and hold on my screen. So tap and hold. And now all of a sudden you see I have this little box that has appeared up on my note that I can actually move around. And as I move it, you can see that below, it's actually really zooming into where it is that I am. And now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come into this zoomed area over here and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to write my name again. And what you can see happen is you can see the difference in the size that has now appeared. So really easy. I definitely wouldn't recommend doing this with a finger. I think if this is the route you're going to go, you absolutely want to get two things, a stylus and a keyboard. 
And the reason I say, you know, obviously the stylus is self-explanatory, but the keyboard is important because if you're trying to do this and type in notability and you don't have a Bluetooth keyboard, what's going to happen is your keyboard on the iPad screen is going to take up about half of the space and it's going to become very frustrating to try to manage both. So that's that. Let's get back to this handwriting. One of the other tools you'll notice that I have here is a little scissor tool. So I've tapped that. The scissors have now become orange. And what I can actually do is go ahead and just cut a around my name and again just using my fingers you know taking two fingers I can actually pinch to make it smaller or I can actually make it much bigger as well I can reposition it anywhere I like on the page and there we have it so really easy to pick my handwriting up move it around and this is where I go back to that idea of paper and pen being so static you know it's not that easy to just pick up and move things around the way it is as you can see here in Notability. So that's going to be the first big thing I'm going to show you and to exit out of this all you're going to do is if we're in our zoom box over here right at the very top you've got another little menu. Um, we're going to go ahead and tap these three lines at the corner right and it's going to go ahead and just get us out of there. Now the other thing I want to be able to show you in here is that on the upper right you've got these little icons that look like pages and when I tap over there, you can now see thumbnails of all of my different pages that are in my notes. Now, right now, I don't have a very overwhelming document. Let's see, I've only got about like eight pages in here, so definitely not a lot. But let's say I've imported a reading or a research article. Maybe I've got like 30 pages or 40 pages. And maybe I don't need all of them. One of the things that I'm able to do is actually go ahead and see at the top right of the page, we've got this little gray bookmark icon. If I tap on it, that bookmark is actually going to turn red. Let me go ahead and go up to page number two, again, tapping the gray icon in the top right. Watch it, it's now going to turn red. Now, what's great about this right here is that now if I come up to the top of sort of the menu right above where it says all pages, and I tap on that little icon, those are the only two pages I'm now going to view. Now, one of the things that I mentioned here is that if you're importing a reading, you may not want all the pages and you may not want to be constantly scrolling through 30 to 40 pages. And the other challenge is going to be maybe there's not enough room for you to annotate on the page. You can always go ahead and just add your own Bellang page in there and then annotate on there and then come and bookmark them so that when you are going back to review, you are reviewing the pages that you have marked up and annotated, not necessarily all of the pages that are there in your document. So let me give you an example of what that looks like. So here I am in all my pages. And let's say, you know what, this page number two, there was seriously, there was just no room to type here, no room to really practice using the text tool. So what I'm going to do is now that my page two is highlighted, you'll see at the bottom left, there's a little blue icon. And when I tap that little arrow there, I get a couple options. And for this one, I'm going to go ahead and add a page. And here we go. Now I've got a blank page. I can go ahead grab my pen tool. I can come over onto, let me change the color there. I can come over onto my page. I can draw on here. I can do, you know, anything I want to do on this nice blank page that I have here. And since this is the page where I have taken all of my notes, I'm going to go ahead and bookmark it, make it red. And now when I come over to my bookmarks, you'll see that that page is there for me in my bookmark. So instead of having to see all eight, I'm only seeing my top three. Now, I want to take a moment here to highlight that with Notability, remember, you can take pictures from directly within the app. This means that if you have notes on paper or you've been doing something on a whiteboard or your professor has notes that are posted up on the board, that you could just easily snap a photo of these and then add them into your Notability note. What's great about this is that you can now annotate over these, you can work with this information, you can document it alongside your other notes, and you can really extend upon some of the ideas that you were initially discussing during class time. I really believe, you know, the pen and the keyboard can really complement each other very, very well. So be on the lookout for those opportunities like the one that I just mentioned to enhance your overall learning experience. Remember, it's not about things competing with one another, but rather how they can enhance and really extend what it is we're able to do.
Another really great thing about notability is that a lot of times when you have a professor who's talking like 100 miles a minute and they're not really giving you a lot of opportunity to pause and reflect upon what it is you're learning, it can be really stressful to try to know, am I getting all the information down? And I think that's where the issue with the laptop really comes in. I think a lot of students are just really stressed. They're just trying to get down every single word that they can because they're scared they're going to miss something. It's going to be on the exam and then they're going to not be able to know what the answer is and things along those lines. And so I think one of the great things about Notability is that because you can record audio, it can relieve a lot of that stress about thinking that you have to get every single word down right in that moment. And it can really allow you to take a step back and really synthesize and conceptualize what it is that you're actually listening to so that you can actually make sense of what it is that you are learning. And one of the great things about Notability that you'll see if you do the welcome activity is that the audio is going to sync with what it is that you're writing on the screen. So instead of the audio file being completely separate, it's going to sync alongside whatever's happening on your screen in that moment so that when you go back to actually listen and watch your note, you can actually listen to the audio and take a look at exactly what you were writing and exactly what you were doing in that moment. And that's a really rare feature that you don't see a lot of other apps provide, which is one of the reasons why I think this will be a really beneficial tool. All right, now I've mentioned this idea a lot of summarizing and synthesizing, conceptualizing your thoughts, writing down questions, creating diagrams and things along those lines. I think oftentimes this can be really challenging because we don't always know where to begin. And if you know me, one of the things that you know is that I absolutely love templates. And I love templates, especially if you're getting started, because I think that they can model what's possible and what things can look like. And then as you gain more experience with the templates, you sort of organically begin creating your own and customizing them to meet your specific needs. So for taking notes and for learning, one of my favorite templates comes from, or there's actually a series of templates that comes from the Harvard's Graduate School of Education called Project Zero. And they have an entire program called Making Thinking Visible, where they have all of these different, what they call thinking routines. Now notice that the word routine is being used, meaning that this is not something that you're meant to use only once, then you move on to the next one and the next one and the next one. No, the idea really here is that you integrate these on a regular basis, making this a part of your learning routine. And again, just because your professors aren't doing something or just because they're not giving you the opportunity to pause and reflect and really sort of assess yourself along the way, doesn't mean that you can't do this independently. I've dropped a link down below to the Project Zero website where they have all of these routines listed. And I've also dropped a link down below to a PowerPoint and Keynote presentation and a PDF, pick whichever format it is you like, where you can actually just screenshot, grab and drop these into your notes to begin using these routines immediately. And if you want, you can even share these with your professors. A lot of times I think people just don't know what's really out there. And once they learn and once they see sort of what's possible, that's when things get exciting. And that's really when people become a little bit more open to different ideas about what they're going to integrate, what they're going to ban and what they're going to allow. Now, remember, just because I've dropped these down in digital formats doesn't mean that that's what you're restricted to. Grab a whiteboard, grab a piece of paper, grab whatever it is that you're comfortable with and make your thinking visible. Because remember, even if you're doing it on a whiteboard, even if you're doing it on a piece of paper, you can always capture them with your device, add them into your notes, and again, build and extend upon these at a later time. One of the things that I've mentioned before, and I'm gonna mention it again because I think it's so important, always be on the lookout for those opportunities where the pen and the keyboard are going to complement, not compete with one another. And if you do come up with ideas or strategies or you have other suggestions for things or advice that you think other students might enjoy or that we can help professors learn, don't forget to drop your ideas down in the comments below so that we can all see these ideas and learn about them together. So do you remember having to carry around all of these books to the library only to really get there and remember that, oh my God, I totally forgot one. 
Or do you remember having graduated from undergrad or from high school and having all of these beautiful notes that are color coded and highlighted or all of these textbooks or study guides that you know have really valuable information so you don't want to throw them away and so you store them away in the garage, you know, thinking that when you need them, you're going to go and find them. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I have lots and lots of those boxes lying around all over the place. And between moving or the number between the number of times that I've moved after college, I honestly don't even think I can keep track of where any of them are anymore, let alone access the valuable information that I have stored away to be used someday by me. Because the reality is that when I actually needed those notes or when I was in a situation where I wanted to pull up that information, it was never, ever, ever on hand. So then let's take a moment to think about what it is we tend to do when we want to look up information. Most of us are really going straight to Google. So one of the things I like to say is what would it be like if you were able to Google your brain and access all of these things that you've learned over time? Well, to help you do this, we're going to be talking about another app called Evernote. And if again, if you've never used Evernote before, not to worry, I have dropped a link down below for you to view a tutorial that will get you started and familiarize you with all the different aspects of Evernote. Now, I really like students to think of Evernote as sort of a filing cabinet, a place that will hold all of your information, business cards, web links, articles, events, just about anything and everything it is that you have. While Evernote is a note-taking app as well, I don't really recommend it for in-class lectures, mostly because most of you that are sitting in a lecture hall, um, your professors are going relatively quickly and Evernote can't, doesn't always sort of keep up with the type of pace that you need and doesn't really allow you to do the things that you want to be able to do in the moment that you need to do really quickly. So think of Evernote as the filing cabinet, but Notability as the place where you take all of your notes and sort of do your annotations and things along those lines. And ultimately what's going to happen is you're going to take everything from Notability and all the other different places where you're sort of learning or you're grabbing information from and file it all away in Evernote. So like all filing systems, we need some way to be able to organize all of our files. And the way we're going to do this is by using something called tags. And searching using tags is very different than say pulling up like control F and trying to find something or search something within a document. And in this example, let's take a look at one. That's a little bit deep for one note here right now, but let's say that I wanted to search note taking with iPads. So let's say I put in note taking and iPads. And you're going to see, even though I have a note in here that is all about the welcome note, all about how to take notes on the iPad with Notability, um, I'm getting absolutely nothing. So let's go ahead now and come on over here into Evernote and we're going to search the same thing. Okay. So over here on my side column, I'm going to go ahead, look at the search icon and I'm going to go ahead. Oh, I've already got it up here. Note taking an iPad. And you see over here now, how many more examples I'm going to get. Now, obviously granted, there's a lot more things in my Evernote notebook as well, but the point that I really want you to sort of take away from this is that when you are tagging, you don't have to have the exact phrase written directly within your notes the way you would if you were searching Microsoft Word or the way that you would if you were searching something in Notability. You have the option here to add tags. So if I come over here to my Notability example, you'll see there's nothing in this note that says note taking and there's nothing in this note that says iPad, but you do see the two words written over here in the gray. And the reason you see those there is because that is how I have tagged this note. So here I am, I'm a student, I've just gone to this workshop or watched this video, and I've just learned all about how to use Notability to take notes on my iPad, and instead of just leaving the note as a welcome note in Notability, I've taken it, I've put it in my Evernote filing cabinet, I've tagged it with iPad and note taking so that if down the line I want to review how to take notes on my iPad or I have a friend who's like, hey, how do I take notes on my iPad? All you got to do, jump into your filing cabinet, put those words in and boom, your very own Google search is going to produce the results that you are looking for.
Now remember, the better you get at creating tags, the better your search is going to be. It's really sort of the difference between doing a regular Google search and doing an advanced Google search. The better you are with your search tactics and techniques, the better your results are going to be. So really quickly, if I wanted to add a tag to this note, if you see the I over on the right hand side, I'm going to go ahead and tap that right there. And now you can see I've got two tags there, iPad note taking. If I wanted to add a tag, all I have to do is tap add tag and I can begin typing. So maybe I'm also going to tag this with notability. So if I wanted to be really specific and say, I want to know about iPads and note taking with notability to be specific, that's the result that's going to pop up first. Now, if this doesn't make a lot of sense to you, don't worry, we're going to be doing lots more work with this. I have recommended to your professors and you know, if you are not at USC and you are at another class, you know, I really encourage you to talk to your professors about this idea and ask them, hey, what are some of the key words or big ideas that you think I should be noting down from this lecture? And as always, like I mentioned, ask your peers. They are your greatest resource. All right, so hopefully from that, you got a really good understanding of the difference between searching and searching using tags, two very, very different ways of sort of accessing your information. So this whole conversation actually really reminds me of something that one of my favorite authors, Tony Wagner, talks about. And basically what he says is that in order for today's students to be successful in today's economy or really even tomorrow's economy, it's not about what you know, but it's about what you can do with what you know. And if you think about that, if you're going to be able to apply what it is that you know in different situations, you can't have everything memorized all the time, ready to be accessed just within your brain. So you need some kind of organizational system to be able to access and pull that information for when you're in a certain setting, you need to look something up, Going to Google isn't always going to be the most efficient way because you're going to have to sort through all the different stuff that's posted out there. But being able to go through your notes is definitely going to be a much more streamlined process and really allow you to quickly access exactly what it is that you're looking for within a very short period of time. So, you know, let's say you're out in the field or you're reading something and you want to reference back to something that was in your old notes or in a reading that you had or in an article that you had come across. You could spend countless minutes or hours going through all of your paper notes or really even going through all of your digital notes that haven't been organized. And chances are you're not going to be too successful or you're going to get frustrated and give up and be like, oh, I'll figure that out later. I'm just going to ignore it. And that connection that you wanted to make in that moment isn't going to be made. So having this system in Evernote where your files are organized using tags will really allow you to pull up the information that you need whenever you want it in any setting that you are in. Because remember, Evernote can be accessed on any device it is that you have. It's completely cross-platform. Now, it's also sort of important to keep in mind that your ability to define tags is really going to be a work in progress. It's definitely something that I think takes a little bit of time to develop a system for. In the beginning, I think you will probably identify most of those keywords. Um, a lot of students like to use the names of their professors or the names of courses and things along those lines to help them track the information. But again, it's really going to be a system that you'll refine as you go along. One of the things that I really recommend is talking to other students, collaborate, share your tags with one another. It really makes for a great discussion. Why I chose a certain tag versus what somebody else chose really kind of forces me to dig a little bit deeper and explain why I've made the connection that I have. And sometimes by listening to the connections that other people have made, again, you're just sort of enhancing your learning experience and really gaining new ideas. And of course, like I've mentioned throughout this video, Think about how you could use this opportunity with paper as well. So for example, you don't just have to tag things that are digital. Remember, you can take a picture of a piece of paper. You can take a picture of what's written on the whiteboard, import it into Evernote, add a tag, and boom, that's going to become searchable as well. And what's really great about Evernote is that any type of handwriting that comes into the app is actually searchable. So it can read your paper notes and it can read what you have up on that whiteboard that you have captured.
Now, one of the themes throughout this video has really been this idea of blending the analog with the digital. And again, if there's one thing that you take away from this video, I really hope it's that. While you may absolutely have a preference for one over the other, I think it's really important to at least recognize that both can be integrated into your workflow. It's really just a matter of determining what that looks like for you because it really is going to look different for each and every student. All right, so there you have it, three strategies for success when using your mobile devices or laptops for learning in and outside the classroom. So if you use any of the above strategies, I would love to be able to hear your stories and your experiences. And I would love if you could leave a comment down below so that we can all have access to what these ideas are. If you want to do a more private conversation, feel free to email me, tweet at me, snap me, and I will then go ahead and share that story anonymously with the rest of our learning community. Um, but I think it's really important that we sort of grow together, learn together. I think we're all kind of navigating these new waters together. And the more we can collaborate and communicate with one another, I think the more beneficial it's going to be in really determining what should face-to-face -face time look like in higher education now that we have access to these devices. So if you liked today's video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to share it with your peers. And also don't forget to share it with your professors. You know, you'd be really surprised by how excited people can get when they discover what opportunities are available. So here's to wishing you lots of success in your upcoming academic or professional journey. Till next time, goodbye.